everybody, I'm Jody Benz. And I'm George Affleck. And it is time for... Unspun, the world edition. We're going global, George. Going global, yet I'm in my son's bedroom today broadcasting from my son's bedroom you got uh, the switch behind me there he's pretty happy but he put that there to show off to the world that he has a switch that uh, is very much in demand these days so um, love yeah, it it's, uh, it's very warm here though <laughs> so the window i'm gonna play a little zelda yeah. <laughs> yeah okay welcome to my living room yes what's I've, that I've, behind you it looks like uh, uh, a, a garden or trees i got it for, no it's a little blanket that i got from the folk festival it was locally made locally sourced we'll get to local business and small yeah. business in just a second but let's start with you've been a very busy man this week and i'm not talking about your day job i'm actually talking about <laughs> following george underscore affleck <laughs> on twitter you will see that george was very 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 on on top of something that was frustrating many Vancouverites, myself included, because when our mayor, Kennedy Stewart, and it's odd, George, because just before this, somebody had put a tweet that, hey, you know, I think that, that, that our mayor's actually hand, handling this pandemic pretty well. And I responded, you know what, agreed. And within like <laughs> five hours, uh -huh. he held a press conference basically saying the sky's falling, we're all going to hell in a handbasket, I'm paraphrasing. City's going bankrupt, we're screwed. And all I could think of was, what kind of leadership is this? Read the room, man. Yeah. And then you went one step further with the facts. Well, and we talked about, it. yeah, it was too soon. His, he was fear mongering. Uh, the data was incorrect. The information was incorrect. He didn't, he, he, he actually had a press conference, I think yesterday, saying, I didn't say we're bankrupt, but he did use the word, I think, insolvent, which, Bankruptcy, insolvency, okay. Uh, you know, so he's denying that he ever said bankrupt. He started blaming the media. That was what he did yesterday. I'm like, oh no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Not as an elected person, um, but he did. He went after the media saying they're, head they're sensationalist headlines. I mean, come on, it's Canada. Our sensational headlines are usually, you know, you know, so you, it's not like that's comparatively to what they see in America. So it was very, uh, so basically one of the things you, you can't, I think we talked about this last week a little bit because I think it happened, but a lot of stuff's happened since. And, you know, you can't go bankrupt as a city. You're, you're an appendage of the province. The province will always cover your butt, uh, can come in and take over. Um, and the city of Vancouver, as was Ken Bain, who used to, used to be a deputy city manager at the at city of Vancouver, tweeted, he said, uh, you're not telling the truth, Mr. Mayor. You, and he actually identified the section in the charter uh, that the Vancouver charter, which has its, Vancouver have, has its own unique charter. The rest of the cities in the province have the municipal charter. So we have a very unique situation in Vancouver. He pointed to the actual uh, rule in the subsection, charter, yes. subsection, you know, 86, I think it was, or 84, uh, that says basically you can borrow money against your, uh, your capital debt or potentially against people who don't pay their taxes. The mayor saying that, oh, people aren't paying their taxes. That's going to lose all this revenue. No, that's not how it works. It's like, think of your strata council. If you don't pay your strata dues, they can foreclose. Your building can foreclose on you. At, after some time, if you owe like twenty or thirty thousand dollars in strata fees, the and we've done it. I'm on my strata council in my building. We have foreclosed on people, and you get really the assets. So yeah. and we just you put the place on auction. Uh, that is no different at the city. If the person doesn't pay their taxes, you get the you get to foreclose as a city. But it doesn't happen. It happens on on occasion for sure. Um, but you know this is it's still revenue. It's just deferred revenue. And so him to say that not paying your taxes would lead to insolvency is totally incorrect. Uh, now that being said, all the things that we are dealing with related to this virus and and how it's you know causing 100 million dollars of parking revenue that we won't see this year. At least 70 million of that we may not see. Uh, he talked about layoffs that they've already done. Most of those layoffs, by the way, are parking attendants. So they're actually just because there's no, they're not ticketing. So they've just said, don't come to work. Um, and so there's, the question really comes down to before you hold a press conference, scaring the hell out of all of us, when we're already all very, very sensitive right now, uh, do your- That's an understatement. Work. Yeah. And so I, I said, hey, well, he obviously had not done his homework. He clearly has not read the charter, uh, which is the for an academic was quite surprising to me. You think a guy who's got a PhD in 
whatever he's got a PhD in, uh, you would have read the charter from cover to cover. I mean, it's really exciting reading. Uh, but for an academic, you think that would be the kind of stuff they would love. So he hadn't done that clearly because it's, it's laid out in, in the charter, the, the rules of, of how you can deal with any problems financially. Uh, you know, there's so many, and I'm just going, who, and then of course this week in council, uh, this was a tweet from Dave Payson that and then I, I checked and basically the city manager was saying, you know, we're not in trouble, <laughs> calm down everybody. Basically, you know, saying the exact opposite of what the mayor had said. So we go, okay, what's the truth here? So I think what's happened is we have a mayor's office, hyper-political, uh, using this uh, crisis as a way to pressure the, and play chicken with the province. Uh, and the staff, being like, oh, well, that's not, <laughs> they're working independently from the staff team uh, who are saying that's not actually how it works, uh, which is what I was pointing out and what Ken Dame was pointing out. Uh, and, and, and the whole point, though, to me is um, the mayor and, and, and I see some councillors are, are saying similar things to me that, you know, before you start screaming and yelling things like this and demanding money from the province, put your own house in order. I think that's what people are asking and what I was asking. Let's Transparency. Transparency. Can we see where you're spending the money before you go asking for hundreds of millions and more? It just, and, and the one thing that you missed on the, the list of things that, that Mayor Kennedy Stewart said in the initial press conference was the threat that perhaps in the midst of a pandemic, we're going to have no budget for police Firefighters and first responders. I mean, the are you system? kidding me right now? Like, are you kidding me right now? You're going to say that to your citizens in the middle of a pandemic, that if I don't get help from the province when I say so, we're going to be reducing the number of people here to help save lives. I mean, I am the most hardcore Vancouverite. You know this about me, George. My family's from here. I live five houses down from where I was brought home from the hospital. I know what it's like to live elsewhere and miss this place like to my core for the first time in my life i thought maybe i don't want to live in vancouver oh wow yeah that's and i said it out loud and my dms filled with please don't leave we need you from some really <laughs> Brad, great Brad people going, so i know where you can come live in thank you the right I, all of a sudden i'm super welcome in port coquitlam weird no but to be i'm not overstating it though george and it, it's this is the unspun piece it's like the passion that goes into you know i'm totally down with supporting mayor stewart when he makes decisions like if he turned around and said you know what i was wrong i'm sorry i screwed up i'm sorry i scared the living bejesus out of you guys but i was trying to get my point across that we i see he's trying to say i've done the research that no one else has done i see this coming we all pull. see economic nightmare coming we all see it we're seeing it from home we're all not working most uh, of us are not working but for if he was to come to the party now, I would give him top marks if he said, I'm opening the books and we're going to get a forensic of, the, of our books done Between and we're going to start from outside, come in and help me here, whatever, like a crack give, team that they probably should have done two years ago, by the way. But uh, okay. But now then do it now and you will have my adoration, but I am pissed at you're not being able to read the room and I'm, you know, not a, it's not probably proper journalism to do so, but I'm an opinion person. So uh, as a talk radio host and listening to you on CKNW, by the way, outstanding. Mike Smith interviewed Kennedy Stewart. What was it on Wednesday? Mm -hmm. And Mike held his feet to the fire in a big way. And there was a lot of backpedaling going on. And most of the talking points I'd heard from you before. <laughs> well, I mean, I was there for seven years and, and financial stuff was kind of my thing. And transparency yeah. was my other thing, and so I was a bit frustrated. And I and I, it's it's challenging because you don't want to be seen as being. And of course, I got some hate on Twitter saying George too soon, you shouldn't be attacking. You know, everybody worked together, but you know, in this case, I think when you're getting misinformation, you're scaring people. You're not leading in a way that I think we need leadership right now. We see the kind of leadership that uh, that we're seeing uh, from Adrian Dix and and uh, Bonnie Henry, and and we're seeing from the Prime Minister. And I don't align with some of these people politically all the time, but I certainly understand that right now where we are. Are in a crisis and leadership is crucial and they get working together is crucial um, on the certainly on the health side but now we're heading towards this economic nightmare of the debt that we're heading to, down and the impacts of that we need to also talk about that and the yeah. city as I have said for uh, 10 years now uh, is living beyond its means way beyond its means and this is forcing them to realize that they are and they need to take a step back and, and analyze how they spend their money and where they spend their money um, of course it's not ideal deal that there it's a crisis that they have to do this uh, I wish they'd done it uh, years ago um, and focus on, on the 
on the core services like police and fire, uh, fixing roads. And building the contingency sure. fund. Building up your contingency fund. And yeah, instead of all your pet projects. projects. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so all so those things, cuts. all those things that you've referred to numerous times on Twitter and your appearances, whether they be on radio or on television, uh, all of them were part of what was discussed. Um, what I found interesting in Mike Smith's interview with the mayor on CKNW on Wednesday was how Mike used his sources within the provincial government mm -hmm. to say, that's not how it works. Like it really does, and I don't know how it works. I've not read the charter. I'm not an expert on it. I talk to experts on it. And uh, I'm go gobsmacked that at this precarious moment in our history, perhaps the most precarious moment in a pandemic that you haven't studied everything, dotted every I and crossed every T to know exactly what you're talking about because it devolved into, well, we can't sell city property because some of them have, you know, co-op housing on them and da, da, da. It's like, okay, stop digging. Yeah, you know, the, what, what it's, it's either, it's one of the three things, either it was laziness Stupidity or political? <laughs> those three things. Well, you said Neither political. Of are good. You They're said you can you you campaign of one of three things, I believe you said, and one of them's fear, right? Yeah, You're fear, not campaigning fear, here. Fear. No. Well, he is. Now is not the. He is campaigning. He's campaigning against the province, which is interesting because he's NDP. Yeah. They're NDP. He's uh, putting uh, the. He, he's probably going to take credit now, saying, so "See, if it wasn't for me, they wouldn't have announced what they did today, which is uh, so across the board help for municipalities." I mean, come on, of course they are. They're they're looking at all measures to try, as is the federal government, and they announced right. stuff today for small business about how we can help us. We we, we know what situation. Everybody knows what situation we're in. Things are moving yeah. so quickly financially and health, on the health side. Uh, I mean, it's in, if I wish government was this nimble all the time. Yeah. But they are being as nimble as they possibly can, given the constraints that government immediately and always has within it. So I think it was we talked. I think we talked about this last week when Trudeau at one of his press conferences and a journalist and he was talking about we're tweaking this one program for I think it was a small business one. We're going to make it fifteen percent uh, or fifty you know, seventy five percent top up instead yeah. of the yeah. Yeah, versus, the, you know, whatever it was. Anyways, it was like, and the journal said, well, why didn't you do that before? Why didn't we? And he's like, well, because, well, you know, we're, we're working this out as we move along. It's not ideal, of course, but I, when I hear from a, a special interest group that are saying that doesn't work or, or a group of citizens saying that doesn't make sense or can you, have you thought about this? We listen. And that's, that's the key to adapting. Obviously, any what a concept. Should and listen. that's what the provincial government, I mean, and John Horgan making announcements about, you know, exactly that. Like, yes, there's going to be help and relief. And yes, we're going to be focused on because ultimately your province is made up of municipalities that need to be supported so that your taxpayers can thrive. I mean, at yeah. one point, we're going to get back to some semblance of normalcy. That's the goal. That's the hope. And leadership comes from someone who says, I'm going to find ways of offering relief as those pieces of the puzzle come to our to come to the fore because the forefront number one was let's not have a surge of of sick and dying people mm -hmm. in every hospital across the province when we only have so many ventilators and we're going to have 25,000 times the number of people than we do have you know so we've we've put up that firewall and then there's the next firewall what do we got to do and then there's the next one and the next one and it's going to take time to get and that's when, once I got over being so mad at Mayor Stewart, and once I decided, of course, I'm going to stay living in Vancouver because I love it here and I'm fighting for it, mm -hmm. is I thought, you know what? I believe that if all of the worst case scenarios came into play in terms of finances for the city of Vancouver and, you know, some things started to break down, I believe that the province would come to the rescue and, and, and make sure that we had all the minimum services that we need for a city that we've talked about a million times, you know, garbage and you know, sanitation of all kinds and police and fire and first responders and da da da. Yeah. And, and I do believe that there would be, you know, where the rules maybe before where you cannot run a deficit, they might say, you know what? After a pandemic, you can for a bit. Right? Isn't that what they sort of announced today? Didn't they say they got like a year for the, where you can run a municipal deficit? Yes, that's that, that's what they announced today. With the province said, okay, you know, you you can all municipalities 
You can borrow against your capital debt, your capital uh, funds. So some have more than others. We in Vancouver, we have a lot of money set aside for capital. Um, and although Vancouver could already borrow before, but other municipalities were constrained. Um, and they can um, uh, they can defer like, their tax. They can they're, they're looking at how they they can defer get taking in some taxes of so the school tax and some other taxes. So, right. so they're really giving, giving them the tools to be able to, and I thought the minister was good to talk about cash flow. And in the business, this is what I'm dealing with every day as a business owner. I'm, it's less about budget. It's more about cash flow. So I'm looking at, okay, how much money do I have coming in and how much money do I get going out and how, what's that going to look like in three months and six months and nine months. And with my current staff complement, what are and my expenses? And I'm not even in my office right now. Like it's like, there's a thousands of dollars a month just sitting there going into a pit. Um, it's uh, that's a good way to frame it. I think that the mayor, we're talking about budgeting, but it really, it's about cash flow. And because the money is fairly predictable and how revenue comes into the city and you can yeah. change the structure. And so it's like, where are the, where are the buckets? Property tax is the most predictable. It represents the biggest chunk of the budget. We know that money's coming in. So we know we have a baseline of that cash. So you know you have that cash coming in no matter what. Even if people don't pay, that you will get that money no matter what. Sometimes in a scary way, but you know, that's the way it works. So you have the six hundred or so million in, in that you get from taxes in Vancouver. Okay, so what other money do we know we will get in? That's you build it on cash flow. What do we need to survive? And then you build your budget, you redo your budget, uh, and, and the things you need from there. I have a little bit of an update on my banking scenario. You want that? Yes. Remember I'm, the mortgage thing? Hold on, because I'm, I'm going to close a window behind it because I can hear. Oh, okay. It's really loud. That's okay. I think there's a truck outside. Oh. Quiet down, you kids. You tell them, George. Ah. Um, man shouts from window. <laughs> uh, oh, the life of broadcasting from home. All right. Uh, so, I love it. Me, okay. Okay, so um, I was telling you uh, over a month ago how I tried to reach out. I've been banking with the same institution uh, for 37 years, right, since I was 15, my first bank account. Same branch since I was 20. So same bank, then moved into the wow. city at 20, started this branch, been with this branch, I'm 52. Called to say, I'd like to inquire about mortgage deferral. You and I talked about that. Took mm -hmm. you seven minutes i believe you said with your bank mm -hmm. yeah i was told to call the 1877 number that i can't even get through to because it's a fast busy signal i've tried for weeks so and i'm i might come across here as a karen like somebody who wants to speak with the manager i don't usually do that i actually usually ask to speak the manager when i really like some service because i think that goes unnoticed more often than not but for the first time i wrote uh an absolute, are you kidding me right now, email to my financial advisor who was advising me to call a 1-800 number. I'm like, my file's this thick. Wow. You should talk to me. No, no. So I wrote the scathing note and I did get a call back from the community manager or something or other. She's very, very nice, very nice. Um, and we went through it all. And I said, listen, I just want the information. I want to know what's available to me. I don't even necessarily need to do it right now, but I want to know what's available. And I'm kind of glad I didn't have the opportunity to do it right away because it's caused me to learn a lot more about it. Uh, they've changed things a little bit where yes. uh, you can pay, when, if you defer that interest that builds up, rather than re-amortizing your mortgage to adapt to this new amount, you can actually pay that off that one lump sum when you're ready in yeah. a chunk I without that, that penalty again too they're not adding six months to the end of your mortgage you have to pay that chunk at the at the very end of your term exactly right. you, or you i didn't learn that either till 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 this week too i'm like oh i thought you were it's a new one add I, six months to the end but they can do the six months to the end if you choose to right but you or you can pay it off with less interest without penalty because obviously that extra six yes. months incurs extra so i was uh, learning about that and then i, I was like well you know as it is uh, before right these are things like can you send me an email with this information like 100 percent. and and the the woman jackie who i'm talking to jackie if you're watching the podcast how's it going <laughs> she's saving she's saving the company right now in terms of <laughs> my business down down the line because she's actually like showing some frustration and being like i'm going to escalate this for you because this is ridiculous wow. she sees it and i'm like jackie i don't want to shoot the messenger it's not your fault it's not my financial advisor's fault it is the institution's flaw 
in what's supposedly a relief for somebody that's turned into more stress than anything else. Like, it's I mean, really they, weird. And the government empowered the banks to be able to do this. Uh, the banks jumped on board. It doesn't seem very complicated, unlike, say, the money that you're getting for EI and all those different programs and tax for this and that. Um, it seems like it would have been fairly simple to send an email describing, okay, if you do this, you get this, this is what happens. It's like we, you and I have both learned, even from my bank, they didn't make it clear. I got the thing in the mail last week showing me this. I'm reading this. Doc I didn't actually understand the document because I thought, okay, is this the document? And I could see it said, okay. Yeah. But it was so unclear. It doesn't say, I'm like, so I had to email my guy. I said, hey, I got this. Here's a screenshot of it. Is this the thing? <laughs> is this the thing? The or thing? is this a thing that's going to hit my credit score uh, or so it? hard that I everything that I've worked for my whole life is going to be knocked to yeah. shit? And yeah, Sorry. Said, that's, the yeah, that's the thing. And this is what it is. And then he talked yeah. about that. And then how it's the end of the term. And you're like, oh, okay. Well, I didn't know that. Uh, so another thing that she told me that I learned just for the sake of, of our Unspun podcast viewer if you do not need to defer your mortgage, but in these uncertain times, don't know if you might need to at some point, it is being suggested that you go through the hoops now yeah. in order to defer it now, because there's no turnkey later. Right. It's get in the queue, and when they say, do you want to defer it? You say, yes, I do. And you take the money that you would be able to right now afford to put in your mortgage and you put it aside, yeah. and then you, pay it and that was like thank you jackie i hung up with ja that that was jackie yesterday she called me while i was making dinner right. and then today i randomly got a survey from my bank <laughs> well good luck with that i mean it's uh <laughs> it's all about jackie you're gonna notice my zeros they're gonna okay. notice my zeros how can we better improve help your clients through a pandemic period. There should be a pause button on my online banking. I should be able to go to my mortgage, click on the link of it. It opens up and there's a pause button and I hit the pause button. Yeah, that seems Bob's so your uncle. Crazy. That's all that needs to actually happen. Everything. I mean, we don't need to hire an entire wing of, of bankers in order to do that. Like you were saying about yeah, it's um, like a paragraph. If you just click this pause button, this is what will happen. This, this is, is what happened. Like literally four cents. We've just explained it better than I've heard from anybody. Thanks. Else. Yeah. And the, the CERB is quite a thing. Um, uh, my significant other was laid off from his job uh, in culinary. Yep. And uh, so he had initially applied for EI. He was moved over to the CERB. Uh, and mm -hmm. like within two days, the deposit yep. came in. And he's like, oh, okay. And once the four months of that runs out, his EI will kick in if he needs that for its full exactly. amount of term. Like it's really quite, once... I'm, I'm impressed is what I'm trying to say. I'm kind of impressed with the systems. And you know what? Justin Trudeau's signature isn't on anything. <laughs> yes. Are you talking about branding? Are you talking about Trump? Are we moving along to Trump now? Let's. Before anybody, before anybody yeah. So now I'll begin the hate mails about Trump. Okay, this is an anti, isn't an anti-Trump rant we're going to go on here. But I do want to talk yeah. about branding. I think yes. This, uh, this is where, and of course, this week, we know Bernie endorsed uh, Biden and got, you know, uh, Biden. Elizabeth Warren. Hi, yeah. Yeah. So the guy, but I'm going, the guy. oh my God, like Trump is just so, he just continues on this very effective approach to his brand, right? It's no different than him putting his name on the top of towers, even if he didn't own those towers. And, and uh, you know, the name is synonymous with, you know, that's his brand, right? So now he's asked it, that they reverse all, change the checks that they send for IRS, which is their, and, and all the money that goes to people, the checks that people will get for employment, that he wants his signature on it. And uh, and his name at the bottom of it, like in a sharpie, it's kind of like my gross. And but it's of course it's brand. And then and then this week all the all the madness in the press briefings, uh, him attacking journalists, which you know goes back to my comment about Kennedy Stewart, like don't attack the journalists. But enough, George, enough. Enough what? That's what Donald. That's what Donald. Oh Trump yeah, said. yeah. Enough. Yeah, what did I say? Um, you know, it, but it's he he continues to manage the news cycle himself yeah he, this is the key to his success you you know this which was which got more press this week the fact that trump goes going at press conferences and attacking journalists or that bernie sanders endorsed john biden uh i'm pretty sure trump got more press than biden got and so that's you know, the key to success that is branding that is you think you still think he's gonna win in november mm -hmm. yep you do eh 
I'm just, almost ready to bet against you. I'm well, almost ready. I mean, because I, I, I don't know that it's ever been. It's sorry. a million years away. It's a million years away in politics. It's a, oh my God, it's a million years this is away for sure. His approach, uh, you know, uh, it's it, it worked last time. Nobody believed it last time. Um, you know, if anybody watches, uh, um, you know, um, um, late, late night with or any of the shows, like in the evenings, it's like they're all kind of touching the same stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it's Colbert, Kimmel. Yeah, yeah. All of them kind of, they're all sort of seeing this issue of his ability to control the message uh, or drive the message. Well, that's why, that's why he's blaming the World Health Organization for mismanaging everything. Find I'm going to defund the WHO because they didn't handle it. Uh, hello, you went golfing 17 times in February, dude. You but nobody's talking about golf well, or rallies. Yeah, no, you reported yeah. you went golfing once. Okay, fine. You can't yeah. keep reporting that you went golfing that number of times. No. You know that as a, a, you know, having been a reporter, you can only tell the story once. And so what Trump is so good at is he keeps feeding the machine of, of content. Content, yeah. content, find something new, change direction, you know, just one tweet. Dominate the headlines. It's brand Distract brand. away from the fact that the new cases of COVID-19 in the United States are spiking daily. Like it's, and his own, uh, nobody's talking about the numbers. Well, the only time theory. you're hearing about that is when Cuomo's talking about it in New York, and, and every now and then he steals a little bit of a headline, but he's not running for president, so. No, and you've got the health, you know, uh, um, the health. Dr. Staff, Fauci. Fauci, who went yeah. in and didn't, I watched the interview, he didn't quite, he was very careful in his words, but the way it was reported was that he said, oh yeah, if we'd started earlier, we, would have, we wouldn't have as many deaths. And he said, yes, right. that's true, but how does that work? What it would be the case for any place? Anybody could have started earlier, but that's that's not. You know, he wasn't saying we should have started earlier. He's saying yes, if we anywhere you could describe that as a situation. I've always said that if we'd started earlier, but we didn't, and we are where we are. And and he didn't blame Trump for not starting or anything like earlier. It wasn't a pointing fingers, and I think that's why he's still able to <laughs> be on yeah. that podium with him. Um, so he can continue to message with wash hands, social distance, yeah. you know, be mindful of, of protecting our elders. Like they're, these are pretty straightforward. Like I'm grateful for the people that are getting those messages across because there are some really, really good people in the United States. And I hope more of them are being protected than what it feels like their president's doing because he doesn't feel like a great leader when he's standing up uh, at the podium at the White House press room, uh, rattling off company names like he's reading the gold sponsors at a rubber chicken dinner. Like it was just the most weird thing. Anyway, um, I'd like to get away from the Donald Trump headline here and talk about the middle of this week is uh, basically after the frenetic shopping for toilet paper, the frenzy has like calmed down a little. Yes. Um, I'm hoping, and I'm now, certainly now, walking the walk. The nail polish remover right here is the big one. That's uh, that's what Amanda was saying. That there's no nail polish remover. <laughs> she was trying to do her own nails. I'm like, that's it's, a oh. it's all these interesting coveted uh, items in hmm. these stores. Uh, so is she completely out of nail polish remover? I, I don't know. Yes, I'm gonna go. You can that. ask her because I have extra. I have lots uh, because I, I never do, never use this stuff, but I always seem to buy it, and I've got like three things of it if she wants it. And I haven't bought it in 10 years. I guess so I don't know. I got some paint. I got nothing. I got some but paint I'll tell you this. The paint thinner's just fine. Paint thinner's just fine. But I, I want to talk about shopping local because I do like to shop at Costco. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not standing in a three hour lineup social distancing to go into Costco. I'd much rather pay a little extra because I can afford to pay a little extra. And if you can't afford to pay a little extra, I totally get that. But I am shopping hyper local. Like I'm I go to Parthenon on West Broadway. I get most of what I need there, milk, eggs, da, da, da. I'll stop at the little Young Brothers Produce Shop, which is, you know, yeah. again, look, owned by a family. The, the kids are restocking the shelves, um, trying to think of places to go that I'd like to be able to be open on the other side of this. The stat on restaurants, 75% of independently owned small restaurants in Canada will not reopen ever. 75 percent brutal and then by the way every wednesday to, along those lines you can there's this campaign to order order takeout from restaurants in your local Takeout canada trip. last night we, we are we are doing thursday because we have two chefs in the house and we're like we know what it's like to be slammed on one day a week when it's a dine out let's do everybody's doing it on that day and if they don't come at you you've got way too much product left over yeah. and it you need to move it so people who come the next day 
are your God sent people. So don't just do Wednesday. Think about maybe Thursday. And also, do, and do pick up because totally the takeout guys they take thirty percent of the revenue, and that's their entire profit for these restaurants. So curbside, curbside, go get your food, walk around, go walk to the place, whatever it was, places you've never tried. Before. The community newspaper. Grab a community newspaper on out of the box on your way. Right. <laughs> Newspapers. You're, uh, is that a transition? I have a, yes, we have, it's very interesting. There's been a lot of chatter about newspapers and, and quite a few have disappeared. The Courier in Vancouver closed. Yeah. Just, uh, I hope that's temporary. Full yeah. disclosure, the newspaper industry, the, the newspaper, news media association is one of my clients. We produce an awards event for them every year. We've it 22 years I've been doing this. I so hosted then, it um, last year, full disclosure. We hosted it last year and it's supposed to be happening next week. Next on the 25th, of course, it's not happening. So we're going to be doing it online. Uh, with our hosts, uh, and but they Sarah Jean Stevens and Jay Janauer, awesome right, hosts. Our, our co-hosts for this for our, our first time online version of the show. But you know the newspapers are going through this very. I mean, they're great journalists in communities across this province. You can talk about the ownership and how this and that. But by the way, almost all the all the newspapers in BC are locally owned. Even if you if it's a corporation, Glacier is 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 Vancouver based, and yeah. Black Press is based in Surrey uh, slash Victoria. Uh, the Orca. They, they, the Orca, the Orca BC. Dot, yes. The Orca. The Orca, the Orca dot oh, CA. Yes, at also, the Orca. Also yes. locally owned up. But you know, but they're doing this campaign right now. And I think innovative new sm small businesses. So these newspapers are going back to trying to get subscribers. What a concept. Pay us eight bucks a month for your content. And I think it's a great um, uh, message to say, you know, that we have to, we, we need to pay the employees to do this work, the journalists to do this work. So, uh, if you have a community that you have a community paper and they're doing this kind of campaign, I would say it's good, good investment. Give, give that community paper the, the money, but also look at all the other small businesses in your town and try to support them. They're doing things innovative. Schools are doing stuff online. Do find ways to don't just take the free stuff. Take right. Help some of these small businesses out with their paid models too, because this is maybe invest. To survive. Invest in your community. I think that is a great way to sort of. Absolutely. Put, the, put a ribbon on what we're doing here. It's what do you want this to look like on the other side? I'll give up CNN, MSNBC, and Fox on my cable subscription so that I can subscribe to three local papers for $8 a month. Like easy, that's easy. Anyways, George, that's it for this week. Time flies when you're having fun. Fast. I know, I went on a bit of a rant. You got your yayas out. It's like therapy. <laughs> See you remember, later, buddy. As the world turns. Remember. The globe is off. Where are we going when this is all over? Hit it. Where are we going to go? Oh, oh, we're going to, uh, looks like India. <laughs> nice. Right. I'm in. All right. See, See you, ya. buddy.